I believe that the growth of this ideal, progressive Christianity, can be accredited to the sin we have a, as a church have committed. And we have to we have to we have to understand that. You see, because let me just say this, you know, I'm going to get to the accountability of the progressives. I'm going to keep I'm going to get to their accountability. But I, don't, I want you to understand something. You know, Satan's always going to have lies out there. But I want us to understand that there are certain things that we do as a church uh, or we don't do as a church that can make Satan's lies to people sound more persuasive than they already are. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to the Church World Confessions Podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Heckett. I hope you guys had an amazing week. Episode 97, inching closer and closer to episode 100. Honestly, just a big milestone um, for myself, milestone for Unassociated in this ministry. Um, thank you guys for being here today because there's a lot to talk about today that I have to get right into. Last week, we talked about conservative Christianity. This week, we're going to talk about progressive Christianity. A quick recap of last week. Um, I'd rather have you just stop this episode and go to the previous episode so you know exactly all of what I said. But um, ultimately, what we got down to is that conservative Christianity. I'm talking about the connotative definition of conservative. Um, these people who are so, you know, emphasize the justification of works um, when we are not justified by our works and they neglect love. Um, and, you know, neglecting love if, if we, we, we read the scripture and it talked about how um, if you don't love, then God is not dwelling in you and how important love is. And, you know, a lot of us have been doing this whole Christian thing without love. And if you're not doing it with love, then you're not doing the whole Christian thing. But go and watch that because this episode is not complete with that previous episode. And that episode is not complete without this one. Ultimately, the reason why this was all put in my heart to talk about these two things was because um, I have to really get to this point. This is a big issue in the church today. I want you to understand that nine times out of 10, and I only say nine times out of 10 because of, you know, I don't know everything and I like to get leave a margin of error, but nine times out of 10, if you have to add an, an adjective, adjective, there you go, in front of Christianity, it's probably heresy. I said that last episode too. Today, we're going to talk about progressive Christianity. This is a liberal view of Christianity, and it is nothing new, ladies and gentlemen. It did not start in 2021, 2020, 2019, whatever it might have be. This has been around. Stephen, I would say that there's even signs of this um, when Apostle Paul was speaking to the different churches of people having these liberal views. Ultimately, I would say they they, they don't care much about repentance. That's, that's, that's very evident. Um, but ultimately, I think that if I were to generalize, and this is generalizing because I can't talk about every single facet of this thing that's continuing to grow, that's continuing to take shape. But if I were to generalize, when I look at progressive Christianity, I see um, people who are very concerned with love thy neighbor, um, but are in no way, shape or form um, concerned with the complete objective truth of the word of God. Um, it's, it's funny because, you know, I'm going to talk about this more in the in later on in the show, but it's like conservatives and progressives are on two sides of the same coin. Um, the conservatives, it's all, you know, revolving around love. Um, the conservatives seem like they neglect love while the progressives have love that is misguided. Um, and we're going to get to that, ladies and gentlemen. I looked up some, you know, progressive videos. I mean, sometimes I see it without even wanting to see it on TikTok or see it anywhere. These ideals that these people are preaching. And I'm not I'm not going to sugarcoat it. When I see these things, these aren't progressive Christian pastors. These are false teachers. It's just simple as that. Um, when I hear someone say that Jesus is not the only way, you are a false teacher to Christianity. You are a false teacher. Um, when I hear people say, you know, when I hear progressive Christians emphasize acceptance and conformity to the ways of the world, I will call you a false teacher because these are things that are very clear, very clearly lined out in the Bible. In fact, I'll give you two verses that just de just destroy both of these stances that are very prominent amongst progressive Christians. John chapter 14, verse six, out of Jesus' own mouth, Jesus said unto, the, unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what Jesus said. So he is the only way, the truth, and the life. He literally said he's the way. He didn't say one of the ways. He didn't say one of the truths, one of the lives. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except through him, except by me. That's what he said. So for you to say that Jesus is not the only way, we're going <laughs> Not only are you calling Jesus a liar, you're also 
saying that if Jesus, you're saying that Jesus is sinning. And if Jesus is a liar, then he's not God. If Jesus is sinning, then he couldn't have paid for our sins. So you understand how that's such a really big issue, right? Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what the scripture says. It says, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Which is really to say that if, if we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and we and we ought not to conform to the world so that we can, you know, prove what is good and acceptable will of God, and perfect will of God. then that means that conforming to the world cannot prove what is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. How many seconds was that? That I just dis dismantled two very big pillars in this heretic, heretic, heret heretical, <laughs> in this heretical message. I don't know if that's a word, but bear with me. You know, you know how it is. I don't know words around here. Um, the scripture is very clear on things like this and clear on many things. But for some reason, this population of people would rather make things blurry. And I have a couple of points on why I think that is why I think that this progressive Christianity is so um, appealing to so many people. Um, the first point I want to make, and I want you to hold on to the seat, to your seats a little bit because some people might not like to hear this. But the first reason why I would say a lot of these people are moving to this heresy in progressive Christianity is because of us, the church. It's because of us. I believe that the growth of this ideal progressive Christianity can be accredited to the sin we have a, as a church have committed. And we have to we have to we have to understand that. You see, because let me just say this, you know, I'm going to get to the accountability of the progressives. I'm going to keep I'm going to get to their accountability. But I, don't, I want you to understand something. You know, Satan's always going to have lies out there. But I want us to understand that there are certain things that we do as a church uh, or we don't do as a church that can make Satan's lies to people sound more persuasive than they already are. And we have to take ownership. We have to understand that. OK. Um, and a lot of the, and what I'm talking about is a lot of the love that we lack, a lot of the love that we neglect. We're very big on truth. We're very big on making sure people know the word of God. But we do not preach sound doctrine with love, even though we are told to preach sound doctrine with love. According to Ephesians chapter four, verse 13, 14, we don't preach sound doctrine with love. We rather preach it with condemnation. We rather preach it because we don't just hate the sin. We also hate the people. And that's a problem. You see, because now there's a population of people that are rising up that hate sound doctrine because we preached it to them with hatred. We preached it to them with condemnation in our heart. I know that's not how you thought this episode was going to go, but I have to start off by saying that. I'm not saying that there's no accountability. I'm going to get to the accountability on their side and the point, but, but I need us to understand this. We're supposed to hate evil, Right. But we're not supposed to hate people. But some of us, we hate the people and we hate the evil and we put it all together, the sins and the people together. And that's really weird because we say that we are aiming to be like Christ, but Christ loved us and he died for us while we were yet sinners. So that just simply doesn't make sense. You can't be Christ-like and hate sinners. I said that last episode. You can't. So many of us, we act as if we've never been a, 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 a sinner. We act as if we don't sin no more. And we condemn these people using sound doctrine too. You know sound doctrine, but you didn't you didn't teach it the right way. I'm not saying that everybody's gonna listen to you every time you preach sound doctrine. That's not true. We're gonna get to that. But you have to I, I want us, the church, to understand this and to just be very vigilant when it comes to preaching, speaking the truth with love. Because I'm telling you this. Some of these people have found progressive Christianity attractive because they saw us hate others. They saw us oppress others, right? And they had compassion in their heart. The only problem is that their compassion was with ignorance of who God actually was. So that compassion led them to wander outside of Scripture to see well, what else is there. Some left. Some faced the church hurt and they left. But others continue to continue continue to claim jesus christ and that's what we call progressive christianity and there are these people who will love their neighbor but how it's completely up to them it's not up to the scripture it's up to them it's not up to sound doctrine it's up to them 
They will love, but they will omit sound doctrine. They will omit God's word. And that doesn't make any sense because God is love. And I'll tell you this. I'm not saying that you have to have a relationship with God in order to love another human being. I'm sure the atheists love each other. But it is only loving through God that yields life, that brings about life. To those who have experienced church hurt, to those who have been preached sound doctrine but but with a club instead of with love, I want you to be, I, I want to talk to you real quick, all right? Please, please, please come home. I'm sorry that you went through that. And if you're somebody who I'm the person that's done that to you, I am sorry. I'm sorry. And um, I pray that you forgive me and forgive those that have offended you. Um, And I ask that you, you know, really, really um, go to God and um, and learn about who he is about who he is don't learn about who Emmanuel is don't don't learn about who the next guy is because we mess up learn about Jesus going to my second point why I think so many people are moving towards progressive Christianity and why this thing is so popular why this thing exists it's because of our flesh I'm playing now the flesh it's because of the flesh, ladies and gentlemen. Second Timothy chapter four, verse three to four. Apostle Paul writes to Timothy, he says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Ladies and gentlemen, this scripture has been manifested in front of our eyes and has been manifested in many times, in many ways throughout the history of Christendom. And today in 2021, we see the manifestation of this scripture in the form of progressive Christianity. We have people following false teachers because they tell them what they want. They tell them what they want to hear. They tell them what their flesh wants. They are gathering teachers to appease their flesh. And they're omitting verses in the Bible. And they're serving their lust and then calling their lust God. So then they can sleep at night. (laughs) So then it's not idolatry in their mind. Oftentimes, their goal is to make the gospel more palatable. Make it more palatable for the world. Um, not being led by the spirit. None of this is being led by the spirit. It's being led by their own judgment, you know, because we've been told sound doctrine and it didn't sound good to us. So now we have to tell you what the scripture means to us. Oh, that verse. Ah, nah, that's 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 not God. Oh, no, that was written by Apostle Paul. That's not Jesus. Oh, no. And you should probably say the same thing. Oh, no, he was talking about something else. Oh, no. Oh, no, that was actually not. And there are so many different theories and ideas that they come up with to omit scripture, to disregard scripture, to invalidate apostles. It's not about being spirit led anymore. It's about their own judgment. And they prop up pillars, pillars in in progressive Christianity. Just make people happy. Just make people comfortable. World unity, unity of the entire world. This is what this is about. But we know as children of God that every time we're happy does not mean that we are we are right with God. In fact, many times that we are happy is because our flesh is happy. Hmm. But the flesh is contrary to the spirit of God in us. Oh, and I don't have to preach about how uncomfortable the word of God can make you. And as for world unity, well, Luke chapter 12, verse 15, Jesus out of his own mouth says, suppose ye. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 12, verse 51. Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth, I tell you, nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house, divided, three against two, and two against three. You know why Jesus said this? He didn't say this because he wants you to hate your mom and hate your dad and hate everybody. He said you to he said this to give us, children of God, a fair warning to understand that this is not about world unity. In fact, the gospel is offensive. It's offensive to people. It offends. The truth offends. The truth can divide people. 
God didn't ask Christians to go out there and make the entire world a unit. He never. No, that's not what Jesus wants you to do. (laughs) The gospel offends. It's not about making everybody happy. It's not about making everybody comfortable. It's not about making the entire world unite in love. In which love rooted in who? A lot of these people in progressive Christianity are relying on their own heart to follow what they say is God's will <laughs> rather than God's word that's literally been given to us. And I'll tell you this much. This is not done accidentally. It's done because they want to live according to their flesh. They want to live according to their lust. But you cannot be a child of God and live out in the flesh at the same time. You cannot be a child of God and live this life of lawlessness and iniquity at the same time. Jesus said, deny yourselves, to deny ourselves and take up our cross. That's Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said, not all those that say, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will of the Father. That's in Matthew chapter 7 and goes on to say that there are going to be people that say, Lord, we've done this in your name. We've done that in your name. We've done this in your name. And he's going to say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Don't take my word for it. Jesus said that you cannot serve two masters. You have to love one and hate the other. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. This is scripture. You say you follow Jesus, but you omit scripture. We confess Christ. Then we are given the spirit. And as we live according to his spirit, we walk down the path of righteousness unto life and not through the flesh which is only unto death and that's not my word that's the word of god romans chapter 8 verse 13 point number three and this is where we really start to understand this concept of of conservative toxic conservative christianity and progressive christianity being two sides of the same coin Point three is about self-righteousness. You see, there's a lot of these people, these people that that are identifying with progressive Christianity without even knowing. Um, These people are not yielding to the spirit or actually with knowing. I'm sorry. These people are not yielding to the spirit. They're yielding to the flesh. They're not yielding to the spirit. They're yielding to the flesh for lust. And then also this is this is the real kicker. They're also yielding to the flesh and not the spirit because they are seeking righteousness in the eyes of the world. And this is a very, very big thing in our generation. If you have not seen this, you must be living under a rock because people nowadays are more concerned with virtue signaling than actually serving the God of virtue. That's what we see. That's what we see. Oh, this person said I need to do this. I need to do go this. I need to be this to be a good person. I need to talk about this to be a good person. I need to accept this to be a good person. And we're, we're looking to the world to teach us how to be righteous. Oh, I have to do this, this, and that. Excuse me? You child of God, who has the spirit of God in you, which is supposed to bring forth fruits such as love, such as kindness, such as meekness, such as temperance, and so on. But you're looking to the world to tell you how to do righteous? To the point where you are now even forsaking, you're forsaking scripture so that the world can see you as a good person. You're, you're forsaking the things that God called out as sin so you can live life however you want to live life and others will live life however whatever way makes them happy and comfortable and you can live in this world of unity not rooted in god rooted in whatever you think you should be rooted in at the time it's all subjective if it ain't god how different is this from the pharisees (laughs) On the, on, on the Pharisee side that we talked about last episode, remember I said one's not complete without the other. On the Pharisee side, um, people are rejecting the spirit of God for self-righteousness through the justification of works. They're rejecting God's righteousness for their own self-righteousness. And on this hand, progressive Christianity, you have people rejecting the spirit of God and God's righteousness for self-righteousness. But this time it's through the justification of the world's approval. That's what it's about on this side, on this side of the coin. That's what this is about. People want to be loved. And even even people want to be loved so bad that even if that means forsaking eternal life. I want to be loved. But they don't think about it like that because they're going to try and twist the scripture. So then it sounds like they can please the world and please God at the same time. 
But this is not possible, ladies and gentlemen. You know why? James chapter 4, verse 4. It says, ye adulterers and adulteresses. And this was used a lot when talking about when, you know, children of Israel would turn against God. It would call, it would compare children of Israel to an unfaithful wife. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You want to be loved. You want to be everybody's friend so much to the point where you are forsaking scripture. You are forsaking the word of God. You're saying you're calling Jesus a liar. You're calling the apostles a liar and you're living according to your own heart, your own flesh, as if you don't have a sinful nature. To conform to the world, to be friends with the world, so the world doesn't hate you. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. And no, that doesn't mean that you have friends that are not Christian. That means you're enemy. No, no, no. Jesus sat down with sinners and he ate and he drank with them for the sake of their own souls. That's not what the scripture is saying. But it's when you have found a friend to the worldly ways and you try to conform. You try to have one foot here, one foot there. It's not possible. It's not possible. John chapter 15, verse 18 to 20. We see this in scripture. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were the world, and the world, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, that the servants is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. May God bless hearing and reading. It's the understanding of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, let me tell you this. There's a lot of things that we as a church has done to make the world hate us. And we ought to repent from those things. Because if we've done evil, we need to repent from those things. If we sin against them, we need to repent from those things. And ask for forgiveness. Um, but I do want to say that the hate is inevitable. If you are trying to live this life just virtue signaling after virtue signaling and getting people to like you. And that's that's your holy grail. Get the entire world to like you. You will inevitably miss salvation. I'm sorry. Jesus said the world is going to hate you. You're not greater than Jesus. The servant isn't greater than his master. If they hated him, they will hate you. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, of course, um, there's so much more to talk about, but um, I I, uh, I got to put a fork in it. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm sure that there's gonna be another video that I want to respond to that I see later on. There's gonna be another doctrine that comes up that I want to respond to later on, and maybe I'll respond to those in the future. But I hope that this two part um, series can really um, you know, really educate a lot of you guys on, on how often we as children of God can miss the mark um, and really um, help you guys to discern the spirits because some of them are of the Antichrist. Some of them are of Satan. Simple as that. Just just simple, simply said as that. And we don't like to call things demonic nowadays, but some of them are simply demonic straight, straight from Satan's shelf. <laughs> um, and we got to be able to call these things out, call these uh, false doctrines out. Make sure we're not following any false teachers and so on. And here's the thing. A really good way to do this is by opening up that scripture. Be like the Bereans. Open up the scripture. Um, don't even I, I I like I said last episode, I don't want you to even take my word for it. I'm sitting behind I don't want you to take my word for it. I have the scriptures that I want you to study for this episode in the description. Read so so and so. And, and, and so you can know yourself and you can know in your heart. So then when you see all these different doctrines, all these crazy heresies in the world, you know, because you've hold true to truth. And you're not going to be swayed back and forth because I'm telling you, more things are going to come, more creative things are going to come. But I need us to hold hold fast to the to the scriptures, hold fast to the truth. Uh, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this word. Thank you so much, Father God, whew, for this series, God. 
Father, I pray you please be with us, Father God, to test every spirit, to to be able to see when when something is not of you, O oh God, and to cling to the things that are of you. Father God, the devil is still here, coming as an angel of light to many people, Father God, to deceive all of us. For God, but Father God, help us, Lord Jesus, to be in our word. Help us, Lord Jesus, to experience your spirit and to live according to the spirit, Father God. So we don't do carry out the, the ways of the flesh. Do we, so we do not conform to this world, O oh God, but be renewed with the be transformed with the renewing of our mind. Father God, I pray you please help us, Father God to love, to love, to love, Father God, but also to love, not in a way that's misguided, but to love with your love, oh God, which can sometimes mean correction, can sometimes mean instruction, but of course also means help and and, and love and neighborly, brotherly love. Help us understand these things and discern the time for these things, oh God. And Father, of course, let your name be glorified in everything that we do. And help us to do things from a position of love, not hatred. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have an amazing, 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 amazing week. I will see you guys next week on episode 98. Love y'all. Peace.